Live from Mountain View, California, it's The Q at OpenStack Silicon Valley, brought to you by headline sponsor, Mirantis. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, we're back. I'm here with Jeff Frick. We're here at OpenStack Silicon Valley 2014. And we're joined by our next guest, a many-time CUBE alum, one of our women in tech, Diana Muller. Welcome. Thank you for having me here again, John so, and Jeff. I think we just had you at, uh, yeah, we had our, our cheat sheet, they took it away. But we just, you were on in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and we had you on in Portland a year ago. And I'll be back on in Paris, hopefully. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be in Paris. You're we're not we're working Paris. on the uh, We're working on the Paris angle. Anyone would like to sponsor the Cube at OpenStack in Paris, let us know. We've got to fly a lot of gear and uh, people over there. Well, well, we have this event, which is a nice, nice impromptu flash mob of, of community, which by the way, it's packed house. It's amazing. This, you have to give kudos to Marantis for pulling this off and the OpenStack Foundation. This event is great. It's very timely in Silicon Valley. I did come down from Vancouver, BC, but it's a direct flight, so that's awesome. It's not Singapore, it's not Paris, but again. Same time and, zone. And the, you know, there is a center of gravity of developers working on OpenStack here in Silicon Valley, so this is incredibly timely, and the event is incredibly well orchestrated, so it's, it's a pleasure to be here. So obviously OpenStack is the center of the action, Red Hat the top contributor really in terms of the lines of code, some will debate that, but you know, it's the numbers of the numbers. It depends on the day of the week. A bug does not, a bug fix does not count as uh, code, but you know, if you count that in there, HP's also doing a decent job. So you have the big guys really contributing uh, value, um, and you guys recently put a blog post out just on September 9th, you passed the new milestone. Two million served applications and growing. Talk about what that means. Can you, well, can you detail that out for us? That, that's been um, OpenShift, which is the platform as a service that runs on bare metal, OpenStack, AWS. Um, we have an online offering, open, openshift.com, um, and uh, there's been a, a little bit of debate recently about scaling and who scales better than what and on whatever. But one of the things that we are really clear about is that our OpenShift online um, service is rock solid today, and um, we just passed a milestone. We've, we've had over two million applications created on OpenShift Online. And what the wonderful thing, uh, my role is, uh, I'm the community manager for OpenShift, and so all the feedback from those two million applications and all those end users comes back into the open source project and ends up being utilized in OpenShift Origin, the open, OpenShift open source project, and OpenShift Enterprise, the productized version of it. And what we've seen since 2011 is this huge growth in people wanting to adopt application lifecycle management um, services like platform as a service. And now what we're seeing um, is some really interesting new innovations coming. And the next release of Origin V3 is, is out there now being beta tested by some of our customers. And um, you know we've got two million served, but I'm sure there's a lots more being served on enterprises right now, um, and there'll be a lot more new innovation coming soon too. So give us the update on, on Red Hat and OpenStack. Obviously Dockerization was a big talk at OpenStack in Atlanta. They just got $40 million in funding. The hype is there, obviously it's got traction. No one can yet see the business model with the developers there. Maybe it's going to be something like a Red Hat. What's your take on that? How do you guys talk around all the trend around Docker? So Docker's a wonderful thing. Um, containerization is really what makes um, OpenShift rock, what makes um, the developer's life so much easier, being able to containerize and create now Docker images. Um, it's a wonderful, lightweight way of creating images and redistributing them. Um, but the next generation of things um, is not just having a single container, but it's being able to manage those containers, version them, um, scale them up and scale them down, network them together and use them as, as different services. And that sort of orchestration piece um, is not quite there yet in the, as Docker, as an offering um, from Docker or anything. But what we're working on at OpenShift is the next generation, which is using Docker images as our container model. 
and Google Kubernetes as um, the, the orchestration for those Docker images, plus another side project of ours called Gear D um, that helps us wire up those Docker images so that they know about each other and can be scaled in a cluster or a pod um, or what have you, um, so that they can be scaled up as an inter interacting Docker images. And it's, it's a new, the next generation is here now um, for, for Docker images and orchestration and you'll see lots of different methodologies for wiring up um, Docker images and deploying applications. So I think they've got the momentum now. Um, we've got the Docker, I think it's called Docker Hub now. They changed it from an index, but there's thousands of images now being shared and being doing it. The other thing that Red Hat is doing is um, certifying the Docker images. So having RHEL based ones so that enterprises feel safe and can trust using those Docker images. We've got a program in place now for certifying that. And that's a, I think that's going to be a key thing to the success of Docker because um, knowing that you can trust what's in the image is going to be core to a lot of people's. So what's the big change in Red Hat? Has there been any um, change of sentiment, mindset since Atlanta? I mean, Atlanta was an interesting show because we saw that real sea change shift where OpenStack clearly was going to be the, the lead horse and amongst the other approaches. Eucalyptus is now sold to HP. All the woods behind one arrow. The marketing war was won. Now we got to produce value. Certainly the two million service is a good value there. But what's going on internally at Red Hat? Are people guns blaring? Has there been any shifting? Has the wind shifted at all? Well, other than Brian Steven shifting over to Google, um, I think, and I, it, that, which I, congratulations on that um, appointment. I think that's a wonderful opportunity for him. Um, we are still full steam ahead using, um, deploying and helping build OpenStack as a project. But what we're really trying to do is create a cohesive, complete cloud strategy. Um, and we, we talk, we walk the walk and talk the talk about hybrid cloud. Uh, we are definitely trying to make sure that people have everything from cloud forms and um, what we call XPaaS, the middleware that they need to create those enterprise workloads on cloud um, and create, make sure that the OpenStack distribution is rock solid, that the storage offerings with Ceph and Buster are rock solid and create a complete cloud offering. I think we're one of um, the few folks out there, and there are others because there's lots of people here at this at event, that are really concentrating on getting uh, from the bottom to the top the entire cloud stack working and running from application development to compute resources to storage and all the networking pieces. And so that's, we're still full steam ahead on OpenStack. So we have a question from uh, Tim Crawford, our virtual co-host. Tim, thanks for uh, <laughs> chiming in, we really appreciate it. Uh, uh, we owe you one, have a beer, we'll send you some cash. Um, we love to have the crowd chat in here, but he, Tim's question is it's specific to you. There's quite a bit of momentum behind Cloud Foundry today. How does OpenShift address that? What differentiators? So I think the, the real differentiator is, is that it's a, a, a we, we actually have a, a larger scale deployment now in a, our public offering than anyone other than probably Heroku for platform as a service. Um, we may not be the best marketers in the world, um, I'll, I'll say that about um, a, an engineering driven company, but we definitely have the customer base out there. We have the Docker um, capabilities built into this current release of um, Origin V3 that's now in beta testing. Um, we have been really pushing very hard to make sure that our enterprise customers and our rail customers have everything they need to deploy both OpenShift and OpenStack. So we're really kind of doing a different approach. I think um, Cloud Foundry has really gone down the Hadoop and other uh, add-on services and, folk, and, and sort of, I, I would call it the Bosch approach. They're really more focusing on making sure that Bosch and Cloud Foundry and all the other pieces of their acquisitions work together as a seamless piece, which is great for them. But for us, we're really focusing on having a complete cloud. Do you think um, Cloud Foundry is trying to boil over the ocean a little bit too much? Uh, a term used in tech land for I think taking on too much. They're probably not trying to boil any ocean. I think they've got some pieces that they're, they're duct taping together with Bosch um, and making into an offering to sell on top of VMware or wherever they can sell those services. And I, I think they're making a very good go of it. Um, but it's not a complete cloud offering. So I think they have a, a very different target market. And I also think that um, we're much more in the side of um, being at a more of an open source, community dr driven effort as opposed to being elsewise. 
<laughs> Being polite. You really held your tongue on that last uh, <laughs> sentence. Um, you got to give them a give them a good college try. They're working hard. Certainly, you know they're mm -hmm. they're putting it out there. Um, and obviously, the enterprises have unique requirements. Martin Mikos today took the stage as the CEO of Elite Eliptus as a technicality because he technically hasn't closed the sale yet with HP. Martin Fink, CTO and GM of the cloud, was up there. But Martin Martin Mikos mentioned um, that the word lamp. Yes. And he kind of threw it out there in a very kind of nuanced way. He didn't really drill down on it, but he kind of threw it out there because his, his history is my sequel, well known, um, and everyone loves him for that, he's just a great guy. But it, it's interesting, Linux drove the LAMP stack development. If you look at the open source community, since, since LAMP, the population of developers has significantly increased. The number of, of deployments in open source has significantly increased. Linux was a driver for that. The question to you is that, is Red Hat looking at this next wave not post Linux to be the same or less? What is different about LAMP versus all the openness within like OpenStack? So I think that the, for me, the real difference between where we are from back in the day with Linux and where we are now is that businesses are really driving the cloud technology. It's, and it's not just the core of the business, it's from around the edges of the businesses. They're actually pulling in, someone will want to spin up a, a cloud for the sales. Um, someone will use Salesforce. Someone will use something. So businesses are really driving where we're going with cloud technology and driving the adoption of cloud technologies. And that's different than back in the day when the LAMP, LAMP stack or Linux was first getting off the ground. That was more of a, uh, a developer, core admin, group of people that were really putting their heads together trying to solve an OS problem. And here, what we have is another, a couple generations later almost, of um, developers driving a larger ecosystem of, of services and networking devices and all kinds of uh, storage to become a cohesive cloud offering. And I think the, the core difference between the LAMP stack evolution and the cloud evolution is how much more all of the edges of businesses are driving the adoption of cloud, which is quite different than what we were in the past. So Tim had to chime back to your answer, which I typed in. If CF Cloud Foundry is boiling the cloud ocean, could the same be said for Red Hat? Well, I don't think Cloud Foundry is boiling any oceans. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if I was clear about that, but I just don't think they're boiling in the ocean. They have some specific tools and offerings that they're tying together with Bosch and um, making a, a product offering. But what Red Hat is doing that's clearly different from um, what Pivotal and, and it is doing is that we are offering a complete cloud with everything from cloud forms to manage and manage IQ, the open source project for that, to the core, uh, the core offering of OpenStack and RDO um, to the platform as a service to the storage pieces. We have a complete cloud offering that we're bringing to the table for our customers. And I think that, you know, that along with all of the middleware from the JBoss team and Wildflot and even the Jenkins continuous deployment pieces that work with OpenShift and, and that, we, we're taking this to the enterprises as a complete cloud offering from which they can just It, it used up. to be the battleground was passed, but now pass seems to be just an app on top of the infrastructure. So there really is just go for it. People can go for their own yeah. approach. So, you know, I always call myself uh, the pl a platform as a server, the PaaS queen, right? I love PaaS for what it brings to the developer life cycle for the ability to um, build and deploy applications. But I also think that it is in, the, in an OpenStack world, it is a module on top of OpenStack, that infrastructure, and there are going to be lots of different solutions to this, to this problem. Awesome, so what other updates can you share with us uh, for Red Hat? I think I'm going to save them all for the platform as a service uh, panel that's coming up in just a few minutes at 4.50 here. Yeah, but they're not watching it, they're not streaming it live, so come on, share some of that, two of those jewels I'm with us. I'm going to leave it at that. Anything else I would say could be used against me by the gentleman in the Okay, in so the are you, are you, <laughs> you said this, the Cloud Foundry guy just came over. We'll, 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 we'll take him to the woodshed too, so when he Please comes do. up. Please uh, do. We, we know James, we love you guys. So we have, competition's a good thing, and at the end of the day, customers want bulletproof. They want reliability. I think at the end of the day, that's what we've learned at Red Hat Summit. Yeah, and I think that the key that for us is really, um, in the public cloud, we have put our, our best foot forward with online. Um, we've tested and tried and true and scaled up to over two million apps being deployed on OpenShift. It is an app 
that same technology that we use on online, we eat our own dog food. And we make it and productize it so that you can actually use it in your enterprise and trust that it's going to scale. Well, Diane, you know theCUBE, we love to watch, commentate, opine, get the facts, share the data. We'll be watching. We've been you know, tracking you guys for a long time. Uh, love Red Hat, congratulations. And uh, we'll, we'll talk you. today. We'll find out how your panel went and make sure you send us a note. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest live in Silicon Valley for the OpenStack SV event kind of sandwich between Paris and uh, uh, Atlanta here in Silicon Valley where the innovation's happening. We'll be right back after the short break. This is theCUBE. <laughs>